<laughs> I win, I win. <laughs> we'll show you how you can win at Garden Palooza next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Fur Point Farms in Aurora, where next week's Garden Palooza will be held. You might have also noticed that the time was different today, because from now on we will be on in Portland at 4.30 a.m. and at 5 p.m. on Coin 6. But today we're going to talk about Garden Palooza that's happening next week. Now this great event is happening September 20th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. There's going to be over 28 different vendors here, and that includes plants and great garden art and tools, all kinds of fun stuff. It'll be fun for the whole family, even the kids. Here, William. <laughs> Coming up in today's show, we'll be going to a potato harvest and also giving you tips on how to harvest the potatoes in your garden. We're also going to be sharing some late summertime gardening tips with Jan McNeilan. But first, bugs eating bugs. This morning, I'm in the garden at Edgefields in Troutdale, and I'm with Logan from Collier Arbor Care. So good morning. Good morning. Um, so you have a, this um, garden as your client, and you are working with them for pest control, care of the plants, health of the plants, but you do something different here to work with the organic nature of this mm -hmm. garden. So what do you do here? Um, so one of the things that we do here um, in, in our uh, you know, integrated pest management toolbox is uh, we do beneficial insect releases. Ah. Um, so we're we're essentially using uh, good bugs to you know help combat the, the bad ones. Oh, that's interesting. So they'll actually eat them and take care of them so you don't have to use any kind of pesticide. Exactly. It's, um, it, we still do have some pesticide mm. use of you know like safer soaps and oils that don't have any residual um, and we're, we're able to, um, to you know, get some kind of long-lasting control using these natural predators. Uh, so you don't have to use the harsh chemicals, you use the softer ones on the environment and on the plants. Exactly. Ah, so what kind of ones do you have in yeah. your little box here? Um, well, this is my colleague Ray, um, Hi, and Ray. We, have, uh -huh. uh, we have three different um, insects with us today. Um, so we've got our, uh, our green lacewing larvas. Um, so that, that's that big honeycomb. So it, inside of there, um, each of those cells has one larva on it. So these are called the aphid lion. And, the, and they, they eat a lot of different uh, pests. They, they eat aphids, lace bugs, mites. Uh, they, they even eat each other. <laughs> <laughs> and they eat them at the larval stage and then they'll hatch out into adults and mm -hmm. what do the adults do then? Well the adults feed on nectar um, so the, the, the adults really only purpose is to, uh, is to mate and, um, and lay new eggs. Ah, and pollinate so that's great mm -hmm. so really you have that whole cycle there and they kind of lay the eggs back and the larva will go and attack all the bad bugs. Yep. Excellent. So, so the next insect that, uh, that we have in there, there is our uh, is our Neosalacious predatory mites. Mm. So these are a general mite predator, and they they're a good mite, you know, which is a, a, a tiny uh, spider, and they eat other mites, um, you know, on like a, on arborvita or hemlocks, you know, any of the mite prone. Plants. Ah, and those are sometimes so hard to control. So really, mm -hmm. to have this in your toolbox or in your um, arsenal there to get rid of them, that's really great. Mm -hmm. And what else you got? And then our last one is the aphid-eating midge. This one is my favorite. <laughs> um, so uh, they're um, they, they they hatch as uh, as adults and they fly up into the tree and they'll lay eggs next to um, high aphid populations. And its larva is this uh, bright orange, um, almost like a little slug. It doesn't have any legs. Um, and it, it, it exclusively eats aphids. Um, and it'll inject a toxin into their legs to paralyze them. And oh. it'll do that to more aphids than it can eat. So in <laughs> high aphid populations, we actually get great control with this with this insect. You know, it, the insect world is just so fascinating mm -hmm. how they have engineered all that. And I know that that tulip tree that we talked about, it really just kind of decimated the aphid problem and it just mm -hmm. really brought it healthy and really clean of aphids. Yeah, it, we, um, we were just uh, inspecting it the other day and we were struggling to find aphids on it. Uh, 
Well, really, there is so much that you could do in your own garden. There's um, all kinds of things that you can get online or at your independent garden center. There's always ladybugs to get, and you can really use those on the problem plants at your garden. And Collier Arbor Care has so much information, so you can go to um, our website and we'll click you over to theirs for more information. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. If you build it, build it right. Build it to last. Don't just build it for yourself. Build it for the next generation. Build it with par lumber and keep building the great Northwest. Par's deck sale is going on now with starting prices on TimberTech 218, Trax 225. Add backyard accents with Basilite and accessories, fire pits, waterfalls, and more. To bring the extraordinary colors of fall to your landscape, you need to come to a place that offers more than the ordinary. At Sagawa Nursery, we love fall. From brilliant yellows to vibrant reds, we have one of the Northwest's largest selections of Japanese maples. At Sagawa Nursery, we also have a colorful selection of hardy plants, so your home can be as beautiful as the season. Come visit us and see how we can help you make your season extraordinary. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Our customers are very clear about the fact that Standard TV and Appliance has the best selection available. They have the most broad selection out of any other uh, of their competitors. There's just every kind of brand represented. We have absolutely no problem finding what we need. There's so many different choices and so many brands that Standard offers that, you know, big box stores don't. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and Appliance. Garden Palooza is back. Join us for the Fall Garden Palooza happening September 20th at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. Enjoy thousands of fall plants and garden art. While you shop, enjoy beer and wine tasting. That's the Fall Garden Palooza on September 20th. Don't miss it. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Right now we have fresh picked or pick your own berries ready in our fields. Here's what we have to offer this week. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro. Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. Well, I'm out in the garden with Jan McNeeland today, and so Jan, it's September, so what's going on in the garden or in the gardening world? Stress. Oh. <laughs> it's been a hot summer, it's hasn't it? It's been a hot summer here, yeah, yeah it's th for sure. Um, I just finally decided to give up on this one. <laughs> Maybe it's time, right? <laughs> it's and it's, I'm not saving the seed, so it's okay. And it's time to change over to fall flowers, Well, fall I've plants. got some, it's a good time to plant new sure. plants. So um, I picked up some foxglove to put in and, and they'll, they'll bloom again in two years, seeing as that they're a biennial. Right. And so why is it a good time to plant in the fall? You just, the establishment is much better. You get the fall rains, the, you're not putting them in, in the spring and then it gets hot and then they're under stress. Sure. So they have a lot more time to establish themselves. So Jan, you're talking about plants that are stressed and maybe water stress and we notice some other plants and so what's going on with those? Well, I've got some uh, small rhododend rhododendrons and azaleas that are just, you know, they're just weeping mm -hmm. straight down and they've been watered deeply several times this, this summer but they are still under stress and um, they are also been attacked by the lace bug as well because they've been stressed. So the more you can keep your plants looking good into the fall rains, the better off you'll be. Mm -hmm. And here's my favorite, I don't know the name of tomato because it just on the tag it just said German heirloom. Okay. And it's been wonderful. It's an indeterminate plant and we've uh, had a good time this year. We've got dozens of tomatoes off of it already and it's still going to town. And so it goes to show that you can plant tomatoes in pots. They do well. You just need a big pot and a little sure. bit of structure. Sure. Actually, all of these are doing better than the ones that are out in the raised beds because mm -hmm. they get better water. Ah, right. For sure. Right. So we're just, the main thing this time of year is weed. Mm -hmm. The more weeding you do now, the less you're going to do in the spring. Get stuff cleaned up. Get fruit cleaned up that's under trees and on bushes and plants so that you're not wintering over any pests. And, and then when you're all done, you change into some really nice clothes. Oh, how beautiful. And you just 
You just say, I'm not going to garden anymore today because I've done enough already. Ah, and you sit in your garden and enjoy. Enjoy it. A friend, Ruth Donovan, who was in her 90s, was all dressed up one day. And I said, what are you going, are you going somewhere? She said, no, you know I can't garden all day. So I'm going to take her advice and just garden half the day. Ah, very nice. And we never sit in our gardens and enjoy. So really, it's a time to sit in your gardens, enjoy all the work you've done all summer. Absolutely. Ah, well, thanks so much. We'll see you next month. Okay. Next week. <laughs> next month. Next month. <laughs>in fact, they call me now even after I've driven off the lot to remind me to come in and get my car washed. That's service. One of the reasons why I like coming to Capital Subaru, actually, they have this, the dog area. And I can just walk my dog around the whole area and we can enjoy the outside. I got it my way on the parkway. Garden Palooza is back. Join us for the Fall Garden Palooza happening September 20th at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. Enjoy thousands of fall plants and garden art. While you shop, enjoy beer and wine tasting. That's the Fall Garden Palooza on September 20th. Don't miss it. Cascade Flooring America is dedicated to making your new home, remodel, or decorating dream come true. As the premier flooring retailer in Vancouver, we have a proven track record receiving Angie's List Super Service Award for the last four years. With products ranging from vinyl and carpet to hand-scraped exotic wood and granite slab, we bring passion into your home's interior landscape. Professional certified designers are ready to help you. Cascade Flooring America, where friends send friends. With you every step. At Heirloom Roses, we value the history and tradition of growing roses. We hand cut and grow each rose and honor the art of growing roses on their own roots. You'll see the difference, how one-on-one -on -one care is deeply rooted in our nursery. With more than 1,500 varieties of roses, you'll be sure to find your favorite rose or soon-to-be favorite rose in bloom this summer. If you need some guidance in selecting the best rose, one of our knowledgeable staff will be happy to help you. Join us in our gardens or find us online at heirloomroses.com. Fall is a time for bold statements. Your garden can make a bold statement too. Let French Prairie Perennials turn your yard into a beautiful statement as unique as you are. Having trouble picking out the right plants? Try our new visual scaping service. Select from our palette of rare and unusual plants and see them placed in your yard before you buy. Then visit our gift shop to find the perfect gift for your home. French Prairie Perennials in Dundee or visit us online at frenchprairieperennials.com. It's a beautiful morning and I'm at Rossi Farms in Northeast Portland with Gabrielle Rossi and Gabrielle you really have a long history of farms. How long has your family been farming? We've been farming here since 1880 so over 130 years. And you are a fifth generation farmer. Yes. That is just excellent and you know so today we're going to talk about potatoes and I think sometimes home gardeners are just kind of confused about when to harvest because you can't see the potatoes. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys do? You can always harvest um, as soon as you want to use the potato. You're welcome to pull it out, cook it right away. Ah. If you want to wait till your harvest, wait till the vines start dying, or you can preemptively kill them about this time of year by snipping the vine with a pair of scissors. Ah, and so that just kind of tells the potatoes to kind of ripen up? Yes, it tells the potatoes where we're ready to wake up and toughen up and get into life. Ah, and so you just kind of go in gently and pull them up. Yes, correct. And um, you, after you kill the vines, you might have to keep snipping them two or three times if they keep growing through the vine kill. And you can take a little pitchfork and loosen the soil and gather them all out of the ground. Ah, and so should we stop watering at that time when you snip the vines or what do you do with watering? Um, 
You want to stop watering as soon as you snip the vines, okay. and you don't want any water on the potatoes after you start to kill them. Oh, okay. So, Gabrielle, when they're ready to harvest, should we harvest them all at one time and then we have to eat them, or how do we store them? What is all that about? Um, but when you cut the vines and kill them, you're going to want to wait two weeks before you completely harvest oh, everything. Okay. However, if you want to have dinner that night, you can pull whatever you want to use immediately. What happens is on the potato, the skin will be really soft, so the skin will be flaky if you don't let the potatoes set in the ground for at least two weeks. Oh, okay. And don't worry about the rain because the rain won't harm the potato even if it's sitting in there. Ah. And so can we store them for later? Like say I don't want to use them tonight, but I want to use them in a couple weeks. So then do I, can I store them in the basement or Absolutely. the garage? Absolutely. Basement's the perfect place, a cold place in your garage. You're going to want to store them dirty, keep oh. them looking dirty. And then as you use them, just wash them. The potatoes have a natural skin that's uh, protective if you leave the dirt on. Yeah. Gabrielle, sometimes we pull them up and they're green. So what can we do with these? If it's a large potato and it just has a single green spot, you're welcome to cut it. Oh. However, if it's green on the majority of its flesh, the taste of it will be a little bit more bitter and sour. Uh, so yeah, we want to compost that or, yes. or whatever. So then what do you do with these fields when you're done? Do you pick everything out of it? Uh, if you are going to plant again in the same ground, you're going to want to pick everything out of it. That way there's no potatoes that are rotten and put disease back in the ground. Uh, so that's really a good idea for the home gardener. You just yes. want to clear everything out and make it as clean as possible. Yes, absolutely. Gabrielle, if we want to come out and buy produce from you, buy potatoes from you, where can we find you? You can find us on 122nd Avenue in Northeast Portland, but we're also at six farmers markets, which you can find on our website. Um, what's the website? RossiFarms.com. Uh, well, you know, they have so many different beautiful vegetables out here at Rossi Farms. Go to their website and find out where they are or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over there. Well thank you so much it was really interesting tips. Oh thank you so much appreciate it. So I'm standing here with Danny Ferguson at Ferguson Fragrant Nursery and we're going to be talking today Danny about wonderful plants that you're having at Garden Palooza. Yes. So before we jump in on this beautiful <laughs> okay. collection I wanted to say that you are going to have these wonderful fall hanging baskets and I have to say lovely and they're really filled with hardy plants that will last through the winter. They are. They have herbs and they have trailing vines and they have pansies, all of which will last all winter long. Nice. So beautiful. And so those will be there. Now, I, right in my face <laughs> is this. This color. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's beautiful. Isn't what is that? this? This is a crepe myrtle. And this is a, so this is a hardy late summer blooming shrub. It has amazing color it this does. time of year. It does. I love them in cut flower bouquets as well. And Danny, you know, hookahs have been, they've been doing some amazing stuff with them and you have really a lovely selection. I love hookahs. They're so beautiful for evergreen foliage, lasts all winter long, gorgeous. And even this, you have blooming scabiosa. Yeah, these, <laughs> uh, these have been blooming literally since March. Wow. Non-stop. And they're absolutely delightful. Now, of course, we all have to think of, of wonderful things like the uh, coneflowers. Oh yeah, coneflowers. The colors of the coneflowers these days are amazing. I love the reds. Yeah, and they look great in the fall time too. And I love, speaking of red, this red stem on this. Jeremy's, oh, isn't that beautiful? Use that in a container as a specimen yeah, yeah. in a container. Oh. Well, and since this keeps hitting me right on the arm here, <laughs> I, Come on. Oh. I mean, with the sun hitting this, oh. it's almost iridescent purple and blue. It is lovely. Isn't that beautiful? And this is their third set of flowers on these delphiniums. Wow. So do you prune them down after they're done blooming and they come back? Yes. Um, just unbelievable color. And now, strong stems. And then if we skitter over here, we have another color that I think is beautiful of the uh, crepe myrtles. Yeah. So this is more of an, kind of an orchidy purple color. But again, uh, crepe myrtles are fantastic. Fall color gorgeous. They are. And as they get older, they have great bark. Yeah, exfoliating yes. bark is like another feature for the whole for a whole season of interest. And I, you know, I'm a big lover of ferns. You have a great selection of them that you're going to be selling out at Garden Palooza. Yes. Tell me a couple of that you have here. Uh, this is the autumn fern. So Beautiful. we like this because it has this nice kind of reddish fall Isn't that color. Fun? And it's perfect for fall. <laughs> perfect for fall. Autumn fern. Yes. Evergreen. Oh, really? That's lovely too. Yes. And then, you know, as, as Mahonias go. I gotta be honest with everybody. I'm not a huge fan of the plant, but I fell in love with Soft Caress when I saw it. Yeah, just the texture. I mean, just to add this texture for yeah. an evergreen plant. It's fantastic. In and the garden or containers. Even though it's late in the season for blooming, what? Does this not know that it's late summer, early fall? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's a hardy hibiscus. Wow. 
and that's uh, lovely. And I got to point out one more that just grabs my eyes. Tell me about this. So this is a barberry, and this is a dwarf form, so it's not going to get more than 18 inches to two feet tall. Wow. But look at the foliage. Every little leaf is, <laughs> is just outlined with gold. It is. It's edged into like a golden lime green color. It's absolutely stunning. How about this beauty here? So this is a uh, Veronica. Beautiful. And again, this has been cut back, and now this is on its third bloom. So really, for you getting this much bloom in a lot of these plants at this time of year, it really was just cutting off the dead blooms. Yep. It? That's such a simple thing to do. And right in front of you, Aww. talk about, it bears the name of your, your nursery as well, <laughs> fragrance. So tell me Aww. about this. Star Jasmine, my favorite fragrant evergreen vine. Is this it? Is, this is fantastic. You should, any place you can put a, an evergreen vine that gives you fragrance all summer long. So if you're wanting to pick up some of these great plants for your own fall and winter gardens, you can go to Garden Palooza on September 20th from 9 to 4. Danny will be there. And then you can come out anytime to Ferguson Fragrant Nursery and pick up some for your gardens. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you, William. It's always a pleasure. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery. A passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save five dollars on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hey guys! We thought you'd be out fishing, Quinn. Hey, I love fish and I like to eat fish. Sometimes I need something from gardeners. Don't worry, Quinn. We've got you covered. Head to the patio, fire up the grill with awesome marinated meats and chicken. Summer never tasted so good. Now this is how you cure a long day on the water. Gartner's Meats treats you right. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Fall in the Northwest is the best time of year to plant with warmer soils and cooler evenings. A time to spend with family and friends. Fall is a time to celebrate. To decorate. And to enjoy the colors that are only found here in our area. Fall is a time to come to Garland Nursery. And let us show you all that fall can be. Garland Nursery, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. With fall and winter approaching, now is the time for Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. With over 75 years of experience in tree, shrub, and lawn care, Collier Arbor Care has the trusted expertise you need. Learn how to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees at CollierArbor.com, then call for a free consultation. Collier Arbor Care, environmentally friendly since 1937. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles! So I'm in the kitchens of Esatico Pasta and I'm here with Patty. And how are you, Patty? Great. So a few weeks ago, we did a segment on this whole process of the making of the pasta. And you gave us a great recipe, an easy one for it. We're going to do the same thing again. But before we do that, tell me again, this we had a rosemary pasta, as I remember before. What is this one? Right, the, the one we did a couple weeks ago was a whole wheat rosemary, and today we're doing a um, Lake Labish onion. I love that because that's another local thing you're sourcing. It is, it's, it's just a phenomenal area for on growing onions, and our farmers do a wonderful job. Um, this one features more, instead of the whole wheat, we're using a base of semolina and organic unbleached as well. So it's kind of a different flower blend. And even your flowers, you get locally from Red Mill, right? We do. Bob's Red Mill. Yeah, Bob's Red Mill. They wonderful. do a wonderful job. So yes. what is it that you're going to be fixing for the sauce today? Well, today, again, another real fast get out of the kitchen <laughs> on a hot summer day. Uh, four minutes is about the boil time on our pastas. So this is going to be a spicy mint sauce, and it, it has some 
um, really nice flavors to it. We're starting off with um, a cup of mint leaf, and this is a no-cook sauce. It's just gonna go right on okay. into a food processor. Which makes it so much easier still. Right, one bunch or about a cup of cilantro, which right now in the garden is plentiful as well as your mint. We have uh, three jalapenos, which we just uh, taken the tops off and seeded, yeah. and then a little bit of garlic. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in here. I have a quarter cup of olive oil that I'm going to just drizzle on in. Now, if you like more, put more. If you like a little less of something, a little less will do. Well, this is a suggestion, not a hard one. Yeah, roll. and I love that about your recipes because, you know, even if you, like if you had some, some like uh, seafood or meat left over from the night before, you can even toss that in. That's it. terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it's whatever you like and it's really an all-inclusive um, kind of thing here. So the other thing I've done is uh, previously added a little bit of cumin uh -huh. and ground fennel and salt. So I'm just going to pulse this for just a bit here until it comes together with the olive oil a bit. This is going to look more like a pesto. I was just going to say that. Right, it looks kind of like right. a pesto. It's going to look much more like a pesto than it is a sauce. So from here, we'll just go ahead and take some of this on out. Oh, it smells unbelievably good. Yeah. And it's not, again, the idea is let the pasta shine. We want to um, give it a little bit of flavor with some extra sauce, but really not smother the flavors of the pasta that we worked so hard to get in there. So. And it really is just that easy, isn't it? It is. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful little vegetarian dish, but like you said, if you had yeah. a little shrimp or chicken left over Put it right from in the there. previous <laughs> night, it sure wouldn't hurt. Well, for more information on a lot of sort of really great recipes that are easy for this time of year and where you can find this great pasta to buy for yourself, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thanks a lot, Patty. Thanks, William. Thank you for watching today and we want to invite you out to Garden Palooza at Fur Point Farms next Saturday. We also wanted to address any of the questions you might have on the changing of the time of the show. Coin Channel 6 had to do this to accommodate children's programming, but to help us out they gave us two different time slots, one at 4.30 a.m. and again at 5 p.m. every Saturday. If you have any other questions, please go to Gardentime.tv. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you all next week <laughs> right out here at Fur Point Farm at Garden Palooza. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. With 36 holes of world-class golf located just 20 minutes from Portland, the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club offers stunning scenery, unmatched challenges, and affordability. Its unique rotating course format offers something for members and daily fee players alike. The Reserve is extremely well-suited for large corporate or fundraising events, evident by the 15 years of experience hosting major golf championships. Call now or visit us online at ReserveGolf.com. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.